Hello, thank you for watching an introduction to fiber arts, a brief history of crochet, and instructions on how to make a crochet heart patch. I'm really excited to share with you the magic of fiber arts, and hopefully you will be inspired to make something of your own. My name is Amanda Sandia. I live in Tampa, Florida with my family. I've been crocheting for over 10 years. I love expressing myself through this craft as it gives me the ability to make so many different things. Here are a few things that I've made throughout the years. On the left is a photo of my family at our wedding. I crocheted my dress, which is based off of the character Zelda from the video game Twilight Princess, if you've ever played it. I also crocheted the wedding cake toppers. In the middle is a dog that I made for a commission. I designed the pattern and it's something that I'm really proud of. The photo on the right are sushi earrings that I made. It's so fun making art that you can wear and I get so many comments every time I wear them out in public. However, my absolute favorite thing to make are customized dolls. This summer, I made dolls of the Dresden dolls. It was so fun replicating their stage costumes and makeup. I gave it to them at their third show in Orlando recently. They even brought them out on stage and danced with them at the start of the show. Moments like that are simply the best and they stay with me forever. Today, I will be going over the wonderful world of fiber arts, specifically with crochet. I will go over a general overview of fiber arts and show some examples. Then I will dive into crochet specifically with a brief history of the craft. Finally, I will go over how to make a heart-shaped patch. I've included instructions in the description of the video, which are very beginner friendly. This comprehensive document details everything that you need to get started. In the document includes linked to videos, including for those who are left-handed. So what is fiber arts? Fiber arts refers to a form of fine art that is created using fiber material such as fabric or yarn. The material can be synthetic, natural, or maybe a mix of both. Fiber art spans many different mediums and crafts. Examples include needlework, tapestry, sewing, knitting, crocheting, and quilting, um, but that's by no means exhaustive of all the different crafts. Fiber art has been practiced for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. Here are some examples that I pulled from the internet. Some projects can be quite large, which I think is incredible, and others have a level of fine detailing where you have to look closely to truly appreciate it. And unlike other forms of fine art, fiber arts can be either two or three dimensional. So there's a lot of flexibility in, in what you can do, not only in the scope of the size, but also just in uh, the medium itself which is very fascinating. Here is a graphic showing a timeline of examples of fiber art throughout history. If you look at the far left of the timeline, evidence of fiber art have been found as early as 10,100 BCE. Now, keep in mind, the nature of fiber, particularly ones from natural materials, do not hold up well over the test of time. That's just how things work, things break down. But if we could just take a time machine into the past, I'm sure we could find examples of fiber art even further back than our current findings. There is something truly fundamental about our humanity with art. I especially love the fact that some societies use tapestries to tell folk tales. When people think about fine art, mediums such as painting, sculpting, and architecture are in the forefront of our minds. However, Despite the pervasiveness of fiber and fabric surrounding our daily lives, fiber arts have not always been given its due credit in the same way as other mediums in the fine art space. Here is a collage I pulled from fiberartnow.net. It's really hard not to be enthralled by the use of color, the shapes, and the artistic intent of these works. As a tactile person myself, I just want to reach in and touch the work. Fiber arts fall under quote unquote crafts, 
which are made by people that we would call artisans or craftspeople. Fiber art mediums are also associated with being made in a domestic context, and in many cases, by women. So you might think making pot holders, blankets, and socks. So yeah, these are all very useful objects in our daily lives, but if you're following a basic pattern written by somebody else, is that considered art? Well, in my opinion, I would say yes. However, the art world has not always agreed with that sentiment, and in some ways it, it still doesn't. A combination of historical devaluation towards women's contributions, as well as the utilitarian nature of craft work, have given gatekeepers in the art world a reason to question the legitimacy of fiber arts in the art world. Thankfully, that sentiment has changed and fiber artists have been given more credence to their work. Lucky for us, we get to enjoy and embrace the creativity now more than ever. In a way, everyday people who may not typically consider themselves artists, let alone fiber artists, have the opportunity to dive into different fiber art mediums for a multitude of different reasons. In particular, the feminist movement has reclaimed various mediums of fiber art and intertwined them with politics. One recent example was during the President Trump uh, presidency. Well, President Trump presidency. Wow. Okay. You know, what, you know what I'm referring to. In 2018, we witnessed people wearing crocheted, quote unquote, pussy hats during women's marches all across the world. The pussy hat isn't particularly difficult to make from a technical standpoint, and by itself, one might not consider politics when wearing it, but combine thousands of protesters, most who are wearing the pussy hat, that's incredibly powerful, and it's a full circle moment for both feminism as well as fiber arts as a whole. All right, now it's time to pivot to crochet specifically now. Are there any crocheters here? Have you ever had a situation where somebody called your crochet work knitted and you had to hold back a slight bit of disappointment? All right, well, let's set the record straight here. What is crochet? Well, it's very different from knitting, uh, which uses two needles and yarn, of course. Uh, crochet is a handicraft in which yarn is made up into a pattern fabric uh, and it's done by looping yarn with a hooked needle. You can also refer to crochet as a verb, such as a sentence like, I am crocheting a pussy hat for the protest tomorrow. The true origins of crocheting are shrouded in mystery. As such, I will focus on the 19th century precursors of crochet, as well as its modern iterations. According to Wikipedia, the word crochet is derived from the French crochet, a diminutive of crochet, in turn from the Germanic croc, both meaning hook. The term was used in 17th century French lace making, where the term cache dash designed a stitch used to join separate pieces of lace. The word crochet subsequently came to describe both the specific type of textile as well as the hooked needle used to produce it. The first known published instructions for crochet explicitly use this term to describe the craft appearing in the Dutch magazine Penelope in 1823. These instructions included five different styles of purse, which you can see in the photo here, and were made using silk. Each purse had different stitches and techniques to achieve their look. How did people actually make these purses? Tambour embroidery was a popular lace making technique at the time. On the left is a diagram of the tools used for tambour embroidery. The instructions required the use of a tambour needle. If you look over to the right, this is a modern iteration of the tambour needle. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look at the tip, it has a hooked end very similar to a modern crochet hook. In fact, Within the instructions of the five purses in the Penelope magazine, they use tambour and crochet synonymously. Another precursor to modern crochet is a technique called shepherd's knitting. Shepherd's knitting uses what we now call the slip stitch to create baskets, rugs, and other items constructed with yarn, 
that's more coarse than silk. So it's going to hold up a little bit better. The craft was also called hooked knitting or knitting with a hook. Shepherd's knitting emerged in popularity at the same time as timbre embroidery. By the 1840s, the modern crochet hook was constructed with ivory. Here is an example of an early crochet hook at the top. They were less dainty than timbre hooks, yet more rounded than the shepherd's knitting hooks. If you look at the bottom photo, there are three hooks. At the top is our modern crochet hook. The middle are the first iterations of a crochet hook. And then at the bottom is a shepherd's knitting hook. By the mid 19th century, crochet instructions were published throughout Europe. Crocheting became popular in the United States much later, first in the 1910s with lace making. Then after World War II, we see a huge reemergence with the craft. In the 1970s, we started seeing bright colors and colorful works, as well as the introduction of the granny square, which you can see in the middle photo. Nowadays, crochet has never been more popular. Crafters can design patterns and finished products and sell them to people all around the world. Styles such as amigurumi, which emerged from Japan, have won the hearts of people who love making adorable toys. I'm particularly fond of this crochet style. Here are some of my works. Before we get started with crochet, I want to mention a few supplies that you will need. Our project today will require the following. Yarn, a crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and if you happen to have them, just a stitch marker. Now, you don't need a lot of yarn, and the yarn weight doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you have a hook that is an appropriate size for the yarn. So in the instructions that I have posted in the description of the video, there's a chart that will help you find the right hook size for the yarn. But if nothing else, you can acquire a yarn with a weight of three and use a 3.5 millimeter hook. Here is the pattern written out in four simple steps. I'm going to show a demonstration of what this looks like, but if you wanted to stop and take a screen cap or open up the link that I have in the description, um, it contains the same instructions at the bottom of the document. All right, so we're gonna have our demonstration here to make the heart-shaped patch. I've got my yarn, a regular worsted uh, weight, and a 3.5 millimeter hook embroidery needle, as well as a stitch marker. You'll also need a pair of scissors. I forgot to mention that, but you'll need it at the end to finish your work. You'll want to grab the yarn and pull about six inches for the end tail. You will begin by creating a slip knot. Then once you are done with making a slip knot, you'll want to put your hook into the loop tighten it but not too tight and then we'll go ahead and create a chain of four chain stitches so yarn over pull through the loop and then repeat that three times all right now that we have our chain we are going to want to make a circle shape with it to do that, you'll want to insert your hook into the first chain that you had made, yarn over the hook, and then pull it through. So now we have a circle shape, and you'll want to then chain one. Yay. All right. The next step is to insert the hook into the circle shape, and then you will want to create six single crochet stitches. When you make your first single crochet, you can mark it with a stitch marker. That way you'll know when the row starts. After you make your first single crochet, just repeat that five more times. Insert your hook into the circle, yarn over with the yarn, and then pull it through to complete that stitch. Almost done. After I worked the six single crochet, 
I will go ahead and remove the stitch marker and then I will use a slip stitch in the first single crochet that we made by yarning over and pulling through both the first and the sixth stitch loops and creating a nice circle here. Uh, I always like to count my stitches to make sure I have the correct number. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, awesome. Yay. All right, so now we are going into step two. All right, going into round two here. In the first stitch, we will work one single crochet. Once you have worked the first single crochet, it's time to put on that stitch marker. That way we know the start of our round. And then in the second, we will work two stitches. We will work a single crochet stitch as well as a half double stitch. In the third, we will work a slip stitch. In the next, we will work two stitches. So you will want to include both a half double as well as a single crochet. And the next will be one single crochet. And then in the last stitch will be a half double crochet. Excellent. Now that we have our round completed, You'll want to just make sure that we have the correct number of stitches in our round. Because we worked an extra stitch in two of them, instead of there being six, there should be eight. So when you count around, just make sure that there are eight stitches. All right, we are moving on to step three. Take out your stitch marker. And the first that we will work into the next stitch is a slip stitch. Go ahead and then once you're done, reinsert that stitch marker. In the next, we will work one single crochet. Now in the third here, we're actually going to work three stitches. You will work a half double crochet, a double crochet, and then another half double crochet. This gives it that very classic heart shape at the top for one of the sides. Once those three stitches are done, in the next, you will work a slip stitch. And then after the slip stitch, you will want to work another set of half double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet into the same stitch. That way, we are now even for both of the rounded part of the heart shape. And the next, you'll work a single crochet. We're almost done here. And then you'll work a slip stitch. And then in the final stitch of the round, you will work two half double crochet stitches. Yay! All right, now it's time to finish off. Take off your stitch marker. Cut off the end of the yarn. And then you'll want to insert your hook into the next stitch and just complete it with a slip stitch. Pull through the yarn and then it will close off right there. Nice and neat. All right. That is our heart patch. It's cute, right? Let's say you want to take this to the next level. You can add beads to it. You can create a border around it for a nice little trim. The world is your oyster here for the different ways that you can customize your hearts, add buttons, put them on hats, scarves, bags, whatever you'd like.